Hey there everybody, Red X Parasite here, and welcome back to Let's Play Super Metroid. It feels really weird saying that, but I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm so used to playing this game and not talking about it. Oops. Okay, uh... I done goofed a little. Uh, there is a missile expansion right here. You want to grab it before grabbing the speed booster. So once you grab the speed booster, uh, things start heating up a little. All right, so getting out of here is fun. Um, if you time your shot well, like that, um, you can open the door at just the right time to allow you to dash through it. Um, has the added advantage of you will kill all of those enemies right there and usually get some pretty good drops. So I got healed basically back up to full. So I'm low on super missiles, so I decided to use missiles for that door. Obviously, it's faster oops, to use super missiles on the red doors when you can, but. We don't have a lot of super miss missiles at this point, so um, we have to be a little bit more sparing. Now I'm doing another sequence break here. You're supposed to actually get the speed booster around when we got it. But the wave beam here is supposed to have the grapple beam for, but again, it's not a diff difficult sequence break to do. You just have to wall jump off the one wall, and I mean, heck, you can even take a little bit of spike damage as well. So I, I used a little trick there to get a shrine spark in a shorter distance where uh, if you don't hold run for like almost a second before uh, hitting it, then you can charge it a little bit faster. Because the way that your speed boost actually charges is based on how many times a certain frame of her running animation happens. Um, and you do have to actually activate the run button uh, for some of them for it to work, but uh, by manipulating that you can actually get uh, really fast or really short uh, shine sparks charged up. Uh, I don't know why I went in here, I'm at almost full health. <laughs> so yeah, TASs can also uh, abuse that very heavily. I had a feeling I might do that. <sighs> Alright, so if you need super missiles, you can farm them off of these guys. Although I'm getting terrible drops. There we go. It's a bit hard. I'm, u I'm using the Wii U Pro Controller for this. Um, I've actually I've played Super Metroid on a number of different controllers, including a GameCube controller on the Wii Virtual Console. Uh, I've played it with an Xbox controller. I've even played it with a keyboard. Don't play with a keyboard. But we have Krokemeyer here. Krokemeyer is actually a really easy boss. Um, I just use charged spazers against him. Or charged uh, spazer and wave beam combo because you can see if you just know the timing of when he's going to open his mouth, then you can get almost a constant stream. So, uh, you need grapple beam for this energy tank? Eh, nonsense. We're going to go and get it right now. It's actually better to get it right now because uh, Krokemeyer's in the middle of dying right now. So, we can't do anything until he actually dies, so um, that's a fun little thing you can do. So now we just wait here. There's a trigger waiting on this side. You'll see his bubbles down there. So that that's the fastest way to get through all of this. Is just make sure you're about past here to make the trigger activate. And of course, you know, he knocks the wall down. And, oh no, he's still alive, but he really isn't. So we'll collect our HP. Oop, messed that up and not get a spin jump still and lose almost an energy tank for it. That was wondrous. All right, 
kill these guys. Now you're supposed to use the grapple beam again, but we're not gonna do that. Uh, this is not actually the first power bomb you're supposed to get. Uh, there's one in a different location that is intended to be the first one, but there's nothing stopping you from getting this one uh, as long as you're in this neck of the woods. So I just get this power bomb first because you need to come here anyways, so why not? All right, I'm gonna do shorter shine spark trick. We'll get this missile, and I'm gonna try to re recoil jump off of this spike. It's a bit tricky. Or I could not jump far enough and get the wrong one. Well, that was not good. <laughs> and we're gonna wait for it to go down, because otherwise we're gonna take a lot of damage. Don't know why I bothered charging a shine spark there, because we're going down and we don't need it. <laughs> So with this room, there's a missile in this room. The fastest way to get it is to do a super jump. Just make sure you get your speed booster going and then jump, turn around. You should have just enough momentum to, uh... oh, I, wow, that was bad. Uh... I let go of a button that I was not supposed to let go of. <laughs> But yeah, you'll, you'll get up to that missile, no problem. That was kind of embarrassing. So we'll get the grapple beam, and instead of leaving the intended way, which is slower, uh, we're just going to back, go back the way we came. Cool, I made it all the way here. We're just going to kind of morph ball past these guys. Yeah, because there's, there's a lot of uh, water in the intended way to leave this area, and we can just single wall jump up this shaft here, and it's a lot quicker. I'm going to stop by these guys, hopefully get quite a bit of health back. I misspaced that shine, part, shine spark just a little. Oh, actually, oh, that wasn't bad. Uh, those two blocks right there are actually speed booster blocks. You can destroy them by going through them with either the speed booster or shine sparks. So, that was a fun little trick. Uh, just use some of my momentum and was able to only have to use the grapple beam once. So we're almost done with our first Norfair segment here. Uh, we're gonna grab one more thing before leaving and that is the ice beam, because we're gonna want it later. So if you can, if you can manage to get the shine spark out of that room, it can save you a little bit of time. It doesn't save you too much because you do have the cooldown from hitting the wall. But we'll grab this. And that'll be the last thing that we get in Warfare for now. On our way out, we'll be grabbing that missile from Kraid. So let's see if I can do a cool little trick here to, um... Alright, you are not far enough. Meh. Get closer. So if you freeze these two guys, you get enough momentum to do a mock ball here. And if you get it fast enough, then you can actually skip leaving this room. Oops. Uh, leaving this room the intended way which is to it's actually to go up and around um, and then end up in the ceiling but it's slower so I try to avoid it oh, anyway, I not have enough momentum to reach
So what I was trying to do there is get like a, a quick little mock ball going, but it was unsuccessful. So here's the missile. St stupid little missile over here. Well, they actually, they could have put more upgrades in crates, so I guess I should be too bad. All right, and then we'll be on our way. So that, so that was kind of the mock ball I was talking about. It's a little bit easier to hit that when you have the speed booster because you can get enough momentum to bridge the gap easily. So now we're going to be heading to the wrecked ship next, although we're going to be... Uh, grabbing the x-ray scope on our way there all you need to get the x-ray scope at least for you know most <laughs> most normal people is power bombs and the grapple beam now if you're good enough you can actually do it without the grapple beam but um, either that takes a lot of health or uh, you need to be TASing. Because <laughs> technically the only item that's required to get in here is the power bombs. And I'm just hitting my head on the spikes all day long. Just for the sake of making our lives easier. I'm just going to grapple across. And the fastest way to grapple is actually to just take it really quickly and short. Don't bother swinging all the way out. Now the, the X-ray scope can actually be used in a number of interesting glitches. Um, well, there's there's one primarily that I know of, but basically that glitch can actually be used to complete the game with only six percent. You can glitch yourself into Torian using it, <laughs> um, among other things. There are other places that you can you can use it. But for the purpose of purposes of this run, uh, we're going to be ignoring it pretty much the entire time. Just because I know where all of the items are and I don't, you know, need to use the x-ray scope. So I got a little bit of health there. Nope. So this, this section you can actually do without freezing these rippers at all, but uh, just having the ice beam does make it easier. So you can use recoil jumps in this room. There are a lot of spikes on the ceiling that allow you to do it pretty easily. I'm gonna try to do another one here. This is one of the ones that I don't typically get. All right, that was pretty darn good. Now there is a missile hidden behind this power bomb. Oops. So I gotta make sure we get that before we leave and then... Cool, I got the one on the return trip too. These ones are not easy. So we're gonna, oop. I'm gonna lay a power bomb here just so we can get that door open so we don't have to hit it on our way back. Now this room's kind of not fun. Um, so power bombs. Supposed to kill these guys. But depending on where they get hit by it, it may or may not kill them, so. I don't know why I was using power bombs on them, but. Or not power bombs, super missiles. Should be trying to conserve those. I'm gonna need at least one coming up here. Well, I need two, actually, so let's not waste any more. <laughs> 
Get that, or we're gonna have to hope that we get some from drops. Which is not the position that you want to be in. And then we're just laying another power bomb here, because this is all of the power bomb door section, basically. Alright, so if you lay a power bomb there before the block comes back, then you can actually. Yeah, I, I did not do that at the right time. But you can basically have the power bomb go off before that block comes back and prevents you from charging up the shrine spark here. Now, you do have to do a shorter charge on that one, like I've been uh, saying. Um, now, what I would usually do here in an any percent run, since I don't get the grapple beam in an any percent run, oops, overshot that, um, would be to shrine spark across this, but yeah, not doing very well with this, but um, that takes up health whenever you shrine spark in this game, so oh, come on, I am holding the button down for long enough, and you know it. Yeah. So if you're good enough, you can carry your, your momentum into your grapple and not have to like swing back and forth to get momentum like this, but eh, I didn't do the best job of crossing. Here, here's an actual mock ball. Oh wow, that was actually like the perfect stop on that corner, wow. Um, but you can do it with the speed booster as well once, once you get it. Um, so this missile expansion is easier to get when the power is off. After you defeat Fantoon, the power turns on, all of these things start moving. Um, and while you can damage boost and technically go faster, um, I've just found getting it now to be a lot easier. Oops. All right, so what I'm going to be doing here, um, this is not the optimal strategy for this boss. Um, okay, so turning off Ice Beam is generally a good idea because the Charge, Ice, Wave, Spacer combo will just make Fantoon go away after one hit and you won't be able to get as much damage out of the given round. What I'm going to be doing, I'm not going to be using missiles against him, which is actually the, yeah, the faster way to beat him. Just because then he won't drop missiles. So I'm just going to use the charge wave spacer combo. And it takes uh, four rounds of that to kill him if you get three in. Now, one way to make this fight a little bit easier for yourself is to use the pseudo screw attack. So if you have your beam charged up and you spin, then you're invincible to most things. Now, not all things. Um, some things will still hit you, but um, it's a good way of avoiding some of his flames. That's two rounds. It's very difficult to hit him out of that. He actually did like his fastest pattern possible here. So that was pretty lucky for us. Other than that, there's really not much to, to this fight. Like after he does that one attack, he still does the same pattern in the background. He's just invisible now. Now one one attack, if you hit him with a super missile, you actually do this one really long drawn out attack that you don't want to do. So if you're gonna use a super missile against him, make sure that it kills him. Because otherwise you're gonna be sitting for about 15 seconds waiting for that attack to go through. So definitely something you want to avoid. Make sure I get all the pickups here. You want to have a little bit of health coming out of this because um, we're going to need it <laughs> for a part coming up. There is an energy tank to get here and we obviously will be getting it, but um, getting to that energy tank, not the easiest thing to do without getting hit. 
So uh, there are two super missiles here. You can get get them in either order. Usually I get the one on the right first, actually, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Okay, uh, I can hop over one block high things. So using a super missile, or super missile. I'm confusing those two for some reason a lot, apparently. But if you use a power bomb there, you can save yourself a little, little bit of time. So the one that you want is here. Uh, here's the super missile. There are three other bombable, bombable blocks there that are fakes. This is the only one that you need. So now let's get out of here without getting hurt too much more. All right, if you lay the power bomb on this side, it won't destroy those blocks here. So you can just run straight across them. And then I actually think this will be a good place for me to leave you. So uh, we'll tackle that one really annoying room that I was talking about uh, in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Red X Parasite, signing out.